are delighted to see so many of you here today. It is good that we have come to this place. For we have come to this place at this time to worship our God and to offer praise unto his great and mighty and glorious majestic name. What an honor it is to be able to serve the God of heaven. I pray that more and more and more people would come to praise God in their lives and live for Him. Those of you who watch this program on television or CD or DVD, we would encourage you to come and be a part of our service. But we would also encourage you to examine very carefully what is preached in these lessons. It is always our intent that we preach nothing other than the word and the will of Almighty God. And if in your listening to these programs and in your searching of Scripture, you find that we have said anything that is outside of the realm of God's holy truth, that you would tell us that. But it is important absolutely imperative for the welfare of your eternal soul that you come to an understanding of these great divine truths. There are people in our culture today who identify themselves as the unchurched. This means that they have no regard for the church. They have no concern for the worship and for the teachings of the church. How very sad that is. In Matthew chapter 7 at verses 13 and 14, Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. For straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. In this passage of Scripture, our Lord and our Savior, who died for the eternal welfare of all humanity, said that many would be lost. There are many in our culture who are unconcerned about the salvation of their souls. It is true that those who are saved sometimes have more concern and offer more prayers for the welfare of the unsaved than do the unsaved for themselves. Many Christian people become discouraged sometimes because more and more people do not have a regard for service to God and for obedience to his will. Jesus himself said that many will be lost. And there are reasons why many will be lost. We might suggest that many will be lost because of a false faith. In verse 15 of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Beware of false prophets. For they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening or ravious, ravenous wolves. These false prophets preach false doctrine. They teach a false way of salvation. In Romans chapter 16 at verses 17 and 18, the apostle Paul said, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine and avoid them. For they serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. There are those in the religious world that teach a doctrine that is false. A false doctrine cannot save the soul. The truth of God opposes false doctrine and false teachers. 
As the Apostle Paul said, false teachers do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ. They serve their own interest. And as a result, they should be marked and they should be avoided. Any doctrine outside the realm of the Bible, the truth of God, is false. Any teaching that is outside the truth of God is false teaching. It creates a false faith and thereby creates a false hope. One who does not hold to the teachings of Christ cannot and will not be saved. Many will be lost because they choose not to follow the teachings of the Bible, but they choose to follow the teachings of some religious idea or some religious teacher. In Galatians 1, 6 and 7, Paul said, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from the gospel of Christ, which is not another, but there be some that would pervert the gospel of Christ. The apostle had preached to the churches of Galatia. Because of his preaching, these churches had come into existence. And now Paul was amazed that they had removed themselves from the doctrine of Christ, from the gospel of Christ, unto another gospel. But he said this was not truly another gospel, but rather it was a perversion of the gospel which he preached. When the gospel is changed to fit the ideas or the opinions or judgments of someone, then it becomes false. We are not to tamper with God's truth. We are not to alter God's truth. In 2 Peter 3 and verse 16, the Apostle Peter said that the Apostle Paul had written some things that were hard to be understood. And there were those who had twisted those teachings unto their own destruction. Because they could not come to an understanding of what Paul taught, And because they chose to twist or change or alter those teachings, they were going to be destroyed. The reason that many will be lost in our society of today is because of a false faith. But also many will be lost because of the evil one. Some simply choose to follow sin rather than godliness. Some seek to have an allegiance with the devil rather than a commitment to God. Some would rather live lives of sinful pleasure than obedience to the will of God. The devil truly has an impact upon our society and upon the souls of multitudes of people. In Galatians 3 and verse 1, Paul said, O foolish Galatians, Who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the gospel before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Paul said that these Galatians had been bewitched. They had been tricked. Satan seeks to trick us. Satan seeks to deceive us. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus teaches that they that have the seed that has fallen on the wayside has been heard, but the devil has come and taken away that seed so that one cannot be converted and thereby be saved. When the gospel is preached and one hears that gospel, Satan seeks to snatch away that truth from the heart, lest we should believe and be converted. Satan seeks to have an impact upon our commitment to Jesus and to His will. In Ephesians 2 and verse 2, 
Paul spoke of a time when these Ephesians walked according to the course of this world, to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of disobedience. There is in the world, and some do not recognize this, that there is the prince of the power of the air. There is a spirit of deception. We are not to walk according to the course of this world. We are not to be in allegiance with the prince of the power of the air. But rather we are to be committed unto God and to His will. In Ephesians 3 and verse 13, the writer says, Exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceptive. Sin will not give what sin promises. Sin promised in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden to give Adam and Eve a mind that would be as the mind of God. They would be as wise as God. But we find that what what the deception of sin really brought to them was death and separation from God. In the book of 3 John, at chapter at verse 11 John says beloved follow that which is good or follow not that which is evil but that which is good he that doeth good is of god but he that doeth evil is of the devil we are to follow what is good rather than what is evil many times the conscience will tell us what is good and what is evil But the Bible will always tell us what is good and what is evil. If we follow good, then we are of God. But if we follow evil, then we are of the devil. If we follow evil, we separate ourselves from God. If we choose the devil, we separate ourselves from God. And many will be lost because they are in allegiance to the evil one, the devil, the prince of the power of the air the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. But many will be lost also because of unbelief. There are many who will not believe. They will not believe in God. They will not believe in the gospel. They will not believe in redemption. They have in themselves a heart of unbelief. In the book of Hebrews, at chapter 3 and verse 12, the writer said, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Notice the phrase, an evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief is evil. Some are lost because of unbelief. They do not embrace the gospel. They do not believe the truth. In chapter 4 of the book of Hebrews, and in verse 2, the writer says, For unto you was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. If we hear the gospel, the good news of salvation. But do not have faith in that gospel, then the gospel is powerless to save. The Bible affirms that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. But, as the writer says in Hebrews 4 and verse 2, that gospel must be mixed with faith. We must believe the gospel. This is why we encourage those who hear the gospel to examine that which they hear, to prove that which they hear, so that they might know whether or not it is truth and right. There is that which is preached which is false, as we have noticed. But the gospel must be believed. A man told me many years ago, he said, 
Young man, I've heard more gospel than you have ever preached. That may well have been true. But none of his hearing was of any profit to him because he did not believe what he had heard. He did not embrace what he had heard. He did not commit himself to that which he had heard. And so the gospel was powerless to save him. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 10, Paul said, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Before one can confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, as did the Ethiopian in Acts chapter 8, he must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Faith comes through an examination of the evidence. Our faith in the Bible comes when we are willing to examine the Bible and test the Bible and prove the gospel that is proclaimed unto us. And then when we believe, we are to confess. Our heart receives the message of salvation and we come to believe that truth so that we might be saved. In Acts chapter 28 and verse 24, the Bible says that some believed that which was preached by the Apostle Paul and some believed not. Is that not true of all gospel preaching today? Are not those, are not there those who believe what is preached and still a vast multitude who do not believe what is preached? Nevertheless, we preach. We preach so that there will be those that believe. And we must never be discouraged by those who do not believe what is preached even though their number perhaps will always be greater than those who believe. In Revelation 21 and verse 8, the writer is speaking of those who will be consigned to the second death, the eternal fire, the lake of brimstone. And among that group found in Revelation 21 and verse 8 is unbelievers. Unbelievers will be lost. Unbelievers who will hear the gospel (coughs) and not accept the gospel or obey the gospel will be lost. But many are lost because of a failure to commit. Some simply will not commit to Jesus Christ. There is oftentimes even in those who believe the gospel And those who believed Christ is the Son of God will not commit. Sometimes there is in the lives of many a partial commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible teaches that there must be a full and complete commitment. In John chapter 6 and verse 66, the scripture says many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. These were disciples. A disciple is one who follows Christ. Why would one follow Christ? He believes in Christ. He believes the teachings of Christ. But here were those who would not commit to Christ. They went back. They walked no more with him. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 14, Jesus says that there is the thorny ground upon which the seed, the word of God, falls. And he describes those thorns as the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this world. Here are people who hear the gospel, the wonderful message of salvation. But there is in their life the cares, the riches, and the pleasures 
And as a result, they will not commit themselves to the truth that they hear. There are many who would rather live in this present world and enjoy what this world has to offer unto them rather than committing to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Philippians the third chapter and the 19th verse, the Apostle Paul speaks of some who are enemies of the cross of Christ. It is difficult for me to imagine, and yet I know it to be true, that there are those who are enemies of the cross of Christ. The cross was, the purpose, was for the purpose of salvation. The Son of God died on the cross so that humanity could be saved. And yet that cross has enemies. Why? Because the cross demands commitment. The cross demands consecration. And Jesus said, or Paul says concerning these enemies of the cross of Christ in verse 19 of Philippians 3, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. They were enemies because of their own desire to fulfill their own wishes, follow their own course, serve themselves, and who also chose to mind earthly things. Let me remind you that earthly things are perishable things. One can buy a very expensive automobile. And yet in a few years, that automobile will not have the glamour and the luster that it once had. Regardless of the cost, it's going to lose its usefulness. It's going to deteriorate. Earthly things have no permanence. Jesus Christ and His truth does. In 2 Timothy 4 and verse 12, or 10 rather, the Bible says, Demas hath forsaken me because he loved this present world. Demas had a choice to make. It was a choice between Jesus Christ and this present world. And because of his failure to commit to Jesus Christ, he chose the world. In Hebrews 12 and verse 1, the scripture says, Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. We do not commit because of weights, because of casual worldly concerns, but also many will be lost because of missed opportunities. In Ephesians 5 and verse 16, Paul said, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. We cannot go back in our lives and reclaim time. We cannot save time. How we redeem time is to use it properly and wisely and carefully. In Acts 17 at verses 32 and 30, 33, Paul was preaching in Athens. He had preached that great sermon about the unknown God. And it says that some said, we will hear thee again of this matter. We're going to listen again, Paul. We're going to give you another opportunity to speak unto us. But verse 33 says that Paul departed from among them. They missed their opportunity. They missed that window of time that they had to be saved. In Mark 5 and verse 17, Jesus had come into the area of the Gadarenes. 
he had encountered a man who was possessed with an evil spirit. And he had cast out this spirit. He had sent that spirit into a herd of swine that plunged themselves over the cliff into the sea. Word was announced that Jesus was here in the country of the Gadarenes. Here was an opportunity for them to know Jesus and to know His power and His salvation. And the Bible says in Mark 5 and verse 17, they desired Him to depart out of their coast. They missed their opportunity. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 5, Jesus is preaching to a great multitude of people. There's a man by the name of Zacchaeus that comes to hear Jesus, he cannot hear him because of the great number of people. Uh, He's not to be deterred from that opportunity to hear the Christ. He climbs into a tree so that he can see Jesus and so that he could hear him. And in verse 5, Jesus comes under that tree, sees Zacchaeus, and he says, Make haste and come down, for today I will go to thy house. Notice those words, make haste. Salvation requires haste. And today I will go to thy house. This is your opportunity, Zacchaeus. But many miss their opportunity. They wait for some reason. They procrastinate for some reason. Jesus says that many are going to be lost. That's discouraging to think about. When you think about the consequences of refusing Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ, and to know that many are going to be lost, that's very disturbing. But it is the choice that they make. It is the decision that they make. Many will be lost, but they will be lost because of a choice that they have made and a choice that they have not made. In this list of things for which many will be lost, where do we find ourselves? Are we full of faith? Have we rejected the evil one? Do we believe the truth of God? Have we committed ourselves to that truth and taken full advantage of the opportunities that are ours? As always, we offer the invitation of Jesus Christ. Faith, repentance, confession, and immersion in water gives us membership in the Lord's church and writes our name upon the roll book of the saved. We offer that blessing.